Star Wars Bounty Hunter came out all the way back on the Nintendo GameCube in 2002. And I was 10 years old, full disclosure here, this was my absolute favorite Star Wars game at the time. Not much has changed as time has gone on, but I will remain objective. So please remember, I am very nostalgic for this game, but I will remain objective. And objectively, I have to give this game a 7 out of 10. My nostalgia hurts a little bit to admit that, but this game is, again, 22 years old now, and it does show. But before we get into that, Star Wars Bounty Hunter puts you in the uh, jetpack of Jango Fett, and this is Darth Tyrannus searching for who will be the base, the model of the clones. He is establishing a clone army, as we all know how that turns out, and Jango is, well, the best bounty hunter, but he has to prove that first, and that's what this game takes place as. This game has you going through a ton of different locations and nothing really bang on with something that you've seen in the movie, but that's okay because it gives it the room to kind of have its own story, do its own thing. This game is incredibly long, at least it certainly feels like that when you're moving from mission to mission, because these missions are quite long, as I say. But there's six chapters, I believe, and each chapter has ranging from three to six different missions in it. And in these missions, you are, of course, moving through an objective towards the end of the thing. You, you have a real goal in mind, but along the way, you're finding different reasons to explore. There are collectibles. There's one secret in each level, and I have nearly memorized all of them as of about 20 years ago. But <laughs> I'm happy to say everything is exactly where it was left 20 years ago. This game is a true remaster, and as such, not much has been tweaked in that way. Some of the controls, uh, mainly the camera, has been updated and modified, but because this is a 20-year-old memory, I'm really not familiar with how that handled on the GameCube, of all things. So, needless to say, it has been updated, and that is very welcome. In the core of this game is really dropping you into that kind of Star Wars universe. You have a scanner, and you're able to scan the different NPCs around you. Not all of them are hostile. Sometimes you You're scanning these different people to establish who has a bounty that's not one of your main quest objectives here. Who has a, a secondary objective, some credits you can earn along the way, and although you can't side objectives, side bounties, well, then you're really just met with the, your own satisfaction. You know you're a completionist, but there's not really much of a reward given other than some of the things in the extras menu. So there is a comic book <clears throat> that kind of describes what's happening in this storyline, kind of gives a little bit more. But aside from that, you're unlocking kind of concept art and really just moving on. This was back when games were just games to experience them. You didn't have an achievement list, although you do now. But, <laughs> but back then, you just really wanted to play the game to get to the end. And... I have to say that motivation still remains with me because as much I mentioned the game getting frustrating and that's mainly because of the age in my opinion some of the different locations aren't really easy to get grips with. You don't really understand where you're going. There's no constant waypoint. There's no map marker, for example. In fact, there's not even a map. So you're going to be frustrated a lot of the time, kind of traversing some of these dark corners to find that, that door to open, that switch to unlock, or in the majority of cases, it was a little grate and you kind of cut away with your gauntlet, a little blowtorch, and then punch that through and move on to the other side. Again, something I did remember being frustrated with 20 years ago, and that still remains the case today. But that said, this game has so many other things going for it that I was really able to break through that frustration, and it didn't really hold me back very much. I was, again, just enamored to break through into the next section and do my regular collective kind of things, my collectibles, my different side quests and just enjoy my time moving through that game. 
like I said, this is a game that was amazing back in 2002. One of my favorites. It still remains that way to this day. And I think everybody who enjoys Star Wars to this day, if you remember fondly old games that just wanted you to play them, I think you need to check this one out. It's aged pretty well for 20 years. You still put up a good fight, Django. But I don't have time for games. I'm on the hunt. <laughs>